Yeah, this is not appropriately picked up on video, but we are straight up just driving off a ledge. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about an SUV you've probably never heard of in your life. And you're going, what the heck is an Ineos Grenadier? Megan is going to be jealous and disappointed that she didn't get to experience this because she loves a good trucky SUV. Um, so first of all, uh, trucky SUVs are kind of my thing, if you didn't know. So like, why wasn't I invited to go off-roading in trucky SUVs? And we're gonna talk about why might you be interested in this particular SUV over some of its competitors. So it's only a matter of time before we see these things like all over overlanding websites. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't care that I was on spring break, okay? Cause you know where I was? Like in Mississippi. It wasn't exciting and the water was brown. I don't recommend, um, I don't recommend. All right, the Ineos Grenadiers are pulling out. This is a new off-road dedicated SUV from, you guessed it, Ineos. Now Ineos is a brand from And they are dedicated to the mission of crafting like the most hardcore focused off-road vehicle that they can. So because of that, and because they're a smaller manufacturer, they have sort of thought about all the things that larger manufacturers have to account for and compromise on when they're building things like Ford Broncos and Toyota Land Cruisers and Mercedes G-Wagons and all that kind of stuff. And they've tried to fix all of the, I wouldn't say problems, but overcome all of the restrictions that those larger brands have to account for because they are a sort of boutique manufacturer. Now they're a boutique manufacturer powered by, get this, BMW B58 engines, all right, uh, 282 horsepower going into these things and the ZF eight-speed automatic. So let's say that's a good starting point for power. But they kind of look like little mini Wrangler Defender G-Wagon mashups. And so far, I kind of dig them. And even better, I'm going to get to take one out on the trail. So it's using a mix of engine braking and hydraulic regular braking. Um, and when it is on the regular brakes, like it is currently, the brake lights are illuminated, can adjust the speed up and down. Uh, this is about the slowest, but it can go faster. I'm not really sure why you'd want to, but. <laughs> and I don't know if this translates on video, but this is probably the steepest hill that I've ever driven down. It's 27 degrees. Now. I was about just about to say, what is the degrees? Cause it feels like 90. Yeah. <laughs> it's 20... just staring at the ground. 27 was the worst. <laughs> So long story short, the Ineos is a body on frame SUV with solid axles front and rear. And there's sort of two trims. There's the Trial Master, which we were told, don't confuse with Trail Master, it's Trial Master that comes with all of your super awesome off-road gear. Then there's the Field Master, which is a little bit more, let's say, livable, but supposedly still just as capable. We actually have both versions here to test and they are supposed to be in this off-road course equally capable um, one of the spokespeople said you could take the field master on like the rubicon trail and it would do just as well as the trial master the trial master is for your like super hardcore off-road stuff um, i'm going to show you guys underneath the ineos where you can see how all of the off-road gear is like tucked up underneath because they didn't have to abide by some of the federal regulations that the larger manufacturers do, they're able to craft this to be like supremely strong and capable. One of the coolest aspects is how strong all the body components are. They're able to hold hundreds of pounds. Like you can mount things just hanging off the body panels and they can hold hundreds of pounds. The ladder in the back, 300 pounds. The roof rack, it's like 800 pounds. It's like crazy amounts of 
poundage. Now, why does that matter to someone like me? Well, I'm 6'6 six, six and weigh 230 pounds. I'm not a small human. And so this thing, with all of its strength and capability, appeals to a larger individual like me. So these rails here and these plugs here, these are like gear mounting points. These are the things that you can put like 80 pounds on. Up here on the roof, you've got your mounting points for the full length kind of roof rack. And then back here, on this ladder right here, this holds 300 pounds. So for someone who's 230 pounds like me, that is significant. Um, this thing is meant to go deep off the trail and carry all of your gear with it and not be taxed at all. The structure is super rigid and supposedly these cars have been put through their paces. They've been tested out in the wild. Apologies for the wind, but we're in the mountains. They've been tested out in the wild over in the UK and stuff like that. And then they were just shipped over here to be demonstrators and uh, they're vault like solid. All right, you got to take a look at the interior here. The interior of this thing is crazy. I mean, crazy cool. You've got all of these sort of marine grade switches, these comfortable Recaro seats, this upright windshield. You've got this sunroof up here. You can rinse out the floor with drain plugs. Like you just lift up the mats and rinse out the floor. Like just getting into this feels like a much, much more serious off-road machine, which I know is the whole point, but this is kind of what you get with a more bespoke sort of dedicated machine. And it is seriously cool. I think Megan's going to be really into this. Let's find out. Um, so the Ineos Grenadier, I think that's how you say it. It's like this new British SUV, right? Oh, sorry, my hand. Um, looks like a giant box on the outside and the inside. And you may think that's a negative. It's not. It's awesome. The truckier, the better, the bigger, the better, the boxier, the better. I do not want an SUV that looks like, oh, look at those smooth lines. No. Give me a box on wheels with a giant box on the, that looks like a box on the inside and on the outside that I can go on the hills with. I'm there. So I don't have official cargo capacity numbers, but this thing can hold 1,800 pounds in the back. That's, that's crazy. And as you can see, the back is substantially large. So if you want your Grenadier to also function as, you know, like an SUV, that doesn't seem to be a problem. And these, uh, for context, are much higher off the ground than they look from far away. Good gracious. Oh, keep the channel clean, keep the channel clean. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, that is awesome. And I'll add this in if they can't hear me on this part of the video. It's rained a lot uh, in the past couple weeks. So I mean, we're going through some, some mud, like this is some goop. No, nothing And yet. I mean, this is, some, there's some pretty serious stuff. Nothing yet. And it's, uh, it's not like it's on a large tire. It's the same size tire as uh, a Toyota 4Runner. And they're the BF Goodrich KO2s? Correct. The view out is, I see what he was saying about the windshield, you know, your your proximity to it. You get such a good view. Mm -hmm. Nothing obstructing your view right out the front. <laughs> yeah, this is not appropriately picked up on video, but we are straight up just driving off a ledge. <laughs> oh my God. That is bonkers and nothing even touched. Nothing even made a sound. That's something else that's probably not being picked up on video is that we have not pinged off the bottom of this vehicle once in this entire loop. All right, I just got back from taking the Grenadier off-road. So uh, Ineos Grenadier off-road, absolute insanity, absolute insanity. I mean, check out some of these images that I captured. Well, luckily my instructor captured because I was too busy driving. Um, I've gone off-road in some Toyotas, Destination Outdoor and stuff like that. Some of the stuff that we were tackling in the Grenadier was way more than that. And it's been kind of rainy up here in Atlanta the last couple weeks. And so there was a lot of muck. There was a lot of mud. I think I got a shot of us going through some deep Georgia red clay. Oh, uh, here we go. And if you can't see this, this is straight up goo. This is 100% Georgia red clay nastiness. And 
<laughs> Might as well be pavement. <laughs> I cannot adequately convey how easily this thing just shrugged it off. I mean, literally shrugged it off like nothing was even happening, like nothing was even occurring. Um, we had it in four low with the center locker engaged, but it has front and rear lockers as well. Those were unnecessary because they were just unnecessary. This thing went up 27, down 27 degree grades like it was nothing. It's got 10 and a half inches of ground clearance at its lowest point, which is the caged fuel tank. Everything else is like another inch or more beyond, like up tucked up under the car beyond that. So we didn't even hear anything, like nothing even touched the bottom of the Grenadier, which is kind of nuts when you see some of the ruts that we were going through. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy is the stuff that we're going over, nothing's even touched the bottom. Um, I wish I could have captured more, but we were not allowed to film inside the prototype vehicles. They're not prototypes necessarily, but they're like kind of making the, you know, off-road circuits. They didn't want us like shooting in there. I can only show you guys shots of the inside of the sort of finished one that was over there, but like, just a mind blowing about amount of capability. So if you're into off-road, if you're into overlanding, if you're into all of these things, the Grenadier, the Enios Grenadier might be something you wanna pay very close attention to. One thing I forgot to make clear was I was in the Trial Master. Uh, so that's the ultimate off-road version. And the thing that I wanted to point out was that this is a mix of Trial Master and Field Master models. The Field Master ones are a little bit more on-road biased. They went over the same course that we did and they had no problem. In fact, there was a Field Master in front of me that just went right on through. Well, basically we're just gonna drive off a ledge. <laughs> Effectively. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so even if you want your Grenadier to be a little bit more like luxury focused, that doesn't seem to diminish what most normal people would ever do off-road. Another thing that I would point out is that it's very comfortable. It's very comfortable, surprisingly comfortable off-road. Um, having gone off-road in some things like Toyota Land Cruisers and stuff like that, I was struck by how comfortable it was. There wasn't a ton of bouncing and rocking, even over some pretty extreme stuff. And these things didn't make a peep. Didn't make a peep, no matter how much they shook. Very impressive for a new vehicle. Most impressive. So I hope you guys found this little look at the Enios Grenadier helpful. Uh, let me know if you would be interested in something like the Grenadier. I mean, you have to have some serious off-road desires for this thing, but having wheeled sort of normal mainstream vehicles off-road, this thing is on another level. It truly is. And you're going to have to spend like G-Wagon prices to get up to this or customize a Lexus GX or, you know, Toyota Land Cruiser or something to do with these things can do out the box. Plus there's that cool factor, of course, of having something that not many people are going to have. So let me know your thoughts. I think this thing is super cool. That B58 motor is like a little added bonus, you know, ZF8 speed. Oh man, I had a great time up here and uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Enios comes back around maybe for a round two.